Okay, let's talk about how to calculate wind loads on a truss tower. First, we would click building, and then we would select the truss tower option, which is down here. Save. We need to pick an MWFRS method, which would be its uh, truss towers fall under other structures, and that's chapter 29. That's why it's the only green option. And then we need to decide whether it's flexible or rigid. Um, normally you would calculate the natural frequency of the structure and software uh, outside of this, a STAT Pro or a RISA 3D or something like this, and you would enter it here, selecting the manual option. Here we don't have that, and so we're going to use a rule of thumb calculator, and we're going to say we have a 100 foot tall tower, and it's going to be three foot at the top, six foot at the bottom, so that would be an average of four and a half feet. And so that gives us a frequency of 2.2, .2, which is, uh, would actually be considered a rigid structure, according to ASCE. Okay, we go to the truss tower option, and we start uh, from the top to the bottom. So at the top, we have 100 foot, we're gonna go down to zero, uh, the solidity ratio, which is the uh, percent, percent blockage, uh, the ratio of, of blocked area to open air, I'm sorry, blocked area to gross area. So in, in other words, by entering 0.4, that's equivalent to saying 40% of my gross area is blocked with members of steel. Um, if you thought it was less than that, you, you maybe you say it was 25%, uh, solidity, then you would enter 0.25. The, the zero would be the absolute min, which would mean you have no um, solidity, and one would be 100% where it's completely blocked. Uh, we will assume, let's assume 0.3 on this one, and we are three foot at the top, six foot at the bottom. You see as you change the dimensions, it will change the, the graphic to give you an idea whether you entered what you intended to enter. Uh, but we're going to go back to s 3 and 6. It's going to be triangular. You could pick a square shape. It shows it as a, a, a solid object just because we can't show the truss um, because we don't know. We don't want to get into all those details of what kind of truss you have and the framing. So it's easier just to show it in this kind of conceptual uh, solid view. And then you account for the solidity with the solidity ratio. Um, the, the structure is a lattice, so it's made up of structural members, and those could either be flat, like a angle and um, wide flange uh, channels, things like this, or it could be round where it's made up of pipes. If, if, if the members are more round, then they're gonna have a lower uh, shape factor, which will give you a lower wind load. Um, if you have some combination, you're better off using the flat, because that's the more conservative. Okay, we perform analysis, and we'll go down to the, to the MWFRS calculations, and we see our 100 to zero foot, uh, all of our dimensions we entered. This is our gross area, this is our actual area. So the gross area is just the, the outer, uh, the overall gross area of the shape, and then we take that times the solidity to get our actual, um, face area that we use for our wind calculation. We get our uh, KZ, QZ, and then we calculate a shape factor, and we get our total force, which is uh, 9,800 pounds. We don't normally, for a structure this tall, just take one KZ and one QZ calculation. We usually break it up. So I'll show you how to do that easily. Go back to the general tab. We're gonna go to advanced options. And then down here, general elevation, it defaults to the mean roof height. We're going to say, I want to go automatic increment of elevations, and I want that to be every 10 feet. Okay, we go back to the tower, perform analysis, and now you'll see that it took our tower and it broke it up into 10 foot sections. So now we have a QZ of 37 at the top and 25 at the bottom. So it's a pretty significant drop and our total force is 8,400 pounds. 
Um, I think that was, uh, I want to say 9,800 pounds before, so it's a fairly significant drop. Okay, I'll show you one more thing. If you had a straight section of tower and then it became tapered, this is how you would do that. So let's say from 100 to 70 is three foot, and then from 70 to zero, we go from three foot to six foot. So that's how you would model that situation.